an update and kind of a workshop. Um, Sarah and I had kind of worked on at least kind of a rough agenda and it, it was really meant for just, you know, sort of discussion purposes and sort of what we thought about really trying to do kind of three things. One would just be kind of a brief, you know, sort of where are we? Um, the second piece would we talk about where do we need to be just trying to, to see if there's some consensus on sort of what we want to do. And then the third piece of the conversation will really be around how do we get there? A little bit about the process. How will the town council sort of do some of its work? Um, how will the board of education do some of its work? What work do both bodies want the joint finance committees to do? And then importantly about the budget schedule. Does that, anybody have any suggestions? Does that work for most of the folks that are on the phone? I have a question. Yeah, hi, Betsy. Um, well, it is just a workshop, but is there any public um, commentary anticipated? Here's what I, I think what we'll do as, as usual in the workshop, I think Paul is behind the scenes working his magic. He's like Oz behind the scenes. I think he's on, he's monitoring both this, the YouTube. And I should say at the top, if anybody is uncomfortable um, using those formats, Paul is also monitoring the, our town email. So if anybody does have any questions that, that you want repeated, um, just email town council, all one word, town council at scarboroughmaine.org. So yes, Betsy, I think at the end, we'll kind of open it up to um, questions and comments and, and public comment. And okay. I'm sure as Paul's facilitating kind of, you know, running the technology, if you will, if something comes up, he may want to interject. So thank you. That your question? Yes, thank you. So, so with that, I just thought for some context, where we are, as everybody knows, that the last week we heard that the combined two budgets together come in with about an approximate 5.5% increase. That that is approximate. There's the numbers have been moving, there may be some changes, but that was sort of the best sort of estimate when it was presented last week, or we, at least we looked at it last week. Just putting some context around that, that means for the average home, if it's worth 100,000 or, you know, it's on either side of that, that'd be an increase of about $325 per household, just to kind of put it in context. Um, there's been, you know, the conversation of around where do we need to be? All these are, are just some brackets. Um, you know, certainly all of all of you have probably seen, you know, some of the emails back and forth. There's there's some folks. Our original target was three percent. Um, that three percent really was. Um, this was before our current circumstances. So if we need to come in somewhere under that, this is just kind of a, a just a benchmark or frame of reference saying to get to zero to 1% increase in the tax rate, we need to reduce the budget collectively um, by the range of numbers that I show. Um, and these, these are just ballpark and I'm sure John's probably got much better numbers, but just as placeholders for now, if it's one to 2%, um, the revised budget reduction is somewhere between 2.2 .2 and 3.1 million. If we come in two to three percent, the from where we are, it's a budget reduction of 2.2 .2 to 1.7. And the in I in I'm not quite sure why the three percent is is in that range. But anyway, those are just kind of the numbers that we you know are for consideration of of what it's gonna to take to deliver, you know, tax rates in those sort of corridors that I've outlined. Um, and then, so I, I guess I'll leave that there and just kind of open it up to conversation about what everyone is feeling based on feedback, based on circumstances, based on where we find ourselves today what do you think we need to do is sort of, what do we think the community will accept? And, and Tom, I'm gonna to kind of ambush you. Um, I do know in the past we've always had some concerns. It's a really tight corridor between when the budgets are finally approved by the town council and the voters and when you have to actually set the mill rates and get the tax bills out, which is 
like you have to know by sort of August to make the tax commitment? Yes, uh, it's typically the second or third week of August every, every year. And that's essentially predicated on a number of things. Uh, really, the, the, the fact is we run into a, a big cash flow problem. Yeah. So yeah. we need uh, that first wave of cash receipts in mid-October. So for us to do the commitment, print the bills, send them out, and then give taxpayers a, a sufficient amount of time to respond and pay their taxes uh, puts us in that late August time frame. And can you talk a little bit? I know one year we were close to that where I think it was the third round of the budget approvals. <laughs> we were really concerned about that cash flow issue. And there are some consequences to that, right? That if, if, if the tax... Yeah, so yeah we, we would, uh, in fact, that year we looked at tax anticipation notes that's borrowing short-term money just to pay our bills. And so there's interest expense that we should avoid uh, you know, at all costs if we can. Uh, but there are ways around a short-term cash crunch, and it would be through that method. Um, I'm hopeful that we can get our work completed without that being an issue, but uh, I appreciate you you making note of that now. And, and so I mean, the, and the, part of the reason I bring it up as we start the conversation would be if the first referendum votes not to July 14th, if, that, if the budget isn't approved at July 14th, then that starts to really, that's sure. why that becomes a you know, an issue for us to consider, so. True, I will share, and, I, and Sandy and Diane might be able to comment further. Um, I'm not sure if the superintendents have uh, made a formal request, but I know Maine Municipal Association is, continues to be in conversation with the governor's office about potentially waiving the school validation requirement for this year because of the uniqueness. Um, Sandy, is that a part of a conversation through your channels at all? I've heard some of that, but I haven't had an update on that, Tom, so I don't know where it's at at this point. So there's nothing definitive, but I can tell you I'm quite sure that there'll be a formal ask of the governor. I don't know how receptive she'll be to that. Uh, so that's something we'll probably know in the next couple of weeks, my guess is. And, and Tom, what's, what's the implication of that? It would relieve the local requirement for, for validation, voter validation of the school budget. This is a new phenomenon prior to 2008. Uh, that was never required. The local legislative body had the ability to approve municipal and school budgets um, as, as the legislative body of the community. Um, in 2008 uh, was the first time we saw this validation piece. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it'll be successful. I just mentioned it in passing. Tom, I'll just throw out there, it, the way I read statute, the, the statute for this, is if we fail to have the budget validated a uh, referendum, then the latest or most recent approved budget by the municipal officers would uh, be available to, or it, that we could use that for the tax commitment. I, I don't know if you've gotten guidance contrary to that, but that's the way that, that I read it. Yeah, I don't know. I can't speak to the last part of your comment uh, as regards tax commitment, but in, I would agree that the, the, the most recent approved budget by the legislative body, the town council in this case, is the budget for operating purposes until such time the voters validate a budget. Uh, I have not explored the scenario whereby it passes the commitment time. Uh, Councilor Gleason, if you have a question? Uh, no, I have a comment um, and a question, I guess. So I think, you know, one of the... Um, areas to focus on is page 10 in the budget book, um, which is the revenues that we have projected for, um, for FY21. Uh, so I would like to understand uh, you know, what the thinking is currently on those numbers that are reflected on page um, 10 of the budget book, which is for anybody who's not looking at it or doesn't have the slide, I'm not sure if we could bring the slide up, but or, um, you know, those are where we expect revenue to come from for the town for FY21. And so I guess my question is to Tom, um, so when we talk about a 0% tax increase, mill rate increase, and we go with the assumption that, which I don't think we can, but we go with the assumption that everything on page 10 is correct, um, what would that represent in terms of a budget increase, if any, uh, based on increased 
uh, valuations in the town or new, new property that's coming online, or I know you put a lot of work into doing, um, you know, kind of really looking at the bottom line of the denominator. So yeah. Peter showed us a slide that showed um, the numbers we'd be looking for from cuts to what's been presented. What would we be looking at uh, fiscal year 20 versus fiscal year 21 if we were to stay uh, budget new, uh, tax, tax neutral, but not necessarily budget neutral. So t mill rate neutral, but not, but not, uh, but not budget neutral. I, and maybe you can't answer that right now, but um, that, that's one area I have some interest. Yeah, Betsy, yeah. This, is, this is Peter. The, my numbers that I presented on the agenda assumes that it is a no change in the mill rate. It does take into account the increase in valuation. I think, Tom, the increased valuation, that was about $10 million. Yes. And so so I, w I wish I had some advance notice of the question, um, but I, I'm fairly confident in saying it's about a 200000 It would allow for yeah. about a $200,000 increase in expenditure. Yeah, Tom, I, when I did the calculation, I think, yeah, that's just about right. So to answer Betsy's question, the, the numbers we looked at on the agenda assumes a, the same mill rate. It does assume some increase in expenditures. So given that backdrop, I just, anybody have any, any things they'd like to share about? Well, and Peter, can I just follow up? Yeah. So, but it also assumes um, on page 10 that we're getting that we expect to get those revenues that we forecast on page 10. Yes. Um, and maybe this isn't the meeting we want to talk about that. Um, but for the, say the 13 million and the, um, especially the 6.15 million for excise tax, we're, you know, what are we feeling like uh, that, may, how these numbers may come in? I don't think this is the meeting for this conversation. Uh, uh, we, sh we could probably and should probably spend half an hour on most of these. And, and I would respectfully suggest that this is not the time to do that. I think I was That's pretty, good. Care pretty That's careful good. in flagging that um, I need some help. I mean, I'm using my best judgment. I will say on excise, I checked today, we are 1% uh, below where we were this day last year. Okay. So, All right. Thank you. So uh, we'll spend a lot of time, I assure you. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think, Betsy, for some of that, that will be as on, further on the agenda, the town council process. The town council process will be looking at the municipal budget. I, I, Tom, I think you can confirm in prior years, excise tax has been a long conversation for, for many different reasons. So. It has, and, uh, and every time we've increased it with some great concern that we wouldn't meet the target, we've always met it. It's been remarkable in, ter yeah. in terms of its performance. I think this is a different year, though. So based on that, going back to the, the 30,000 level view and just trying to get everybody's perspective, and I guess I'll only share mine. I, I'm concerned that I think given this environment, given the fact that we have a lot of business closures, the Wall Street Journal I sent around today is now saying sort of the first wave of people impacted are restaurant workers and retail and some of the others. They're now expecting a lot of professionals, lawyers and others are going to be sort of a second wave of impact to all this. I'm just concerned that I think a 5.8% increase is gonna be, it's gonna be a really tough sell for our public, our constituents. Um, so with that, if anybody have any thoughts on where we should look to go and how we get there and, and, and where do we need to go from here? I think, Sarah, you got yeah, so, sorry, Peter. Um, not sure how you guys facilitate your meetings. If you would prefer us to just physically raise our hand or use the raise hand uh, button. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a new territory for all of us. So I, 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 I yeah. everybody's been raising hands for now. Work great. Okay, cool. I, I think um, I have a, a thought on that, but I did just want to clarify. I'm, I'm. I'm looking at a, a spreadsheet that is a physical one, so unfortunately I can't share it, uh, but it's one that Kate created for us, uh, I think last year during the budget process, and it basically goes through, um, basically since FY9, 
what we've asked for in terms of budget increases and what the result of that has been for the mill rate increase. Um, and maybe this is just for my edification, because I'm, I'm looking like in FY19, for example, our mill rate percentage change from the prior year was 0%, which is kind of what we're talking about doing. But that still came with a 5.93% uh, increase in expenditures on the school side. And so I guess to go to your, your later point is, you know, what are, I don't have the answer to this, and I think this is for discussion, but like, what are all the inputs that we're considering to get to, or like, are, are you guys suggesting that we just come up with a target and then we kind of work backwards to get to that? Or are we going to look at all the inputs? Because I don't think anyone would say that there's, um, that there's not going to be an impact to the Scarborough, the local economy. We all see it. I mean, Tom, you're talking about it just in terms of excess tax, but we, we all know or have been touched by people who have lost their jobs or the families are impacted one way or another. What I would like to try and what I'm trying to understand, and maybe we don't have this information yet, is like, what is the actual impact? And what is the actual impact to our taxpayers to, uh, to not pay uh, either existing taxes or more taxes next year? Um, because those are the things that I, I like some actual data that we could see to help inform this decision um, rather than just saying we want to get to zero percent. Sarah, I'll take, I'll, take a, uh, I'll take a stab if I could. I, I appreciate and, and very much would like to have the same sort of uh, data from which to base the decision. My strong suspicion is we're not going to have that level of clarity in the next couple of months. Uh, we can do some fairly granular analysis of unemployment claims in town. Uh, you know, is that a direct uh, reflection on folks' ability to pay? Arguably, yes, but there's, you know, there's all sorts of other factors. So I, I'm afraid we're just not going to have all those answers. So I think it comes down to somewhat of a political calculus uh, of where we need to be. I can tell you the attitude embraced by the town council and the, and the board of education back in 08, 09 was we can't be the solution, but we don't want to exacerbate the problem. And so right or wrong, they did a 0% and largely they did that on the back of using fund balance. I can tell you we're still digging ourselves out of that hole. Uh, at the time, it, it seemed to make the, make sense and it was the right decision for the group at the time. Um, so. I, I know that's not terribly helpful at all, but uh, I'm just afraid we're not going to have those answers. Okay. And then I guess just to my other point around the 0%, I think, um, I forget who asked the question, but Tom, you had said something about a 0% mill rate would equate to roughly 200,000 in expenditure increase. Is that accurate? Did I hear you right? Yeah, slightly less than that, about 150,000 increase. So maybe that's where I need some more clarification because like I said, I'm looking at a chart that says we hit 0% increase in mail rate in FY19, but yet the school budget increase was 5.93. So I'm just not able to like reconcile how I think we hit 0% oh, mail rate. I think the, uh, the effect of the reval, the first wave of the reval um, throws that out of whack a bit. I'd be pleased to, to look at that offline and we can talk about that, Sarah. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that the, what we're trying to get to today is, and, and again, it, it jumping ahead a little bit in, in the agenda is that with the referendum being pushed out to July, that kind of changes the timetable of the budget and where we are. And I think what we're trying to do in this conversation is just get some consensus among this group, whether we think the current tax rate that was delivered in the first submission or our first look of a 5.5% increase. And I think Tom said it well. politically, do we think our taxpayers, given the current environment or the environment that's going to exist, are they going to be comfortable with that or will they want to see something different? So I, I think that's sort of the first question. Um, and I see some others with their hands up. So April, I think. So my question, I think, is for Tom. Um, when we set the joint budget 
uh, goals for first reading, we had kind of used the 3% mill rate as our metric. And we had said, well, if the school comes in at less than six and the town comes in at less than three, then that should, you know, get us to close to a 3%. Tom, can you tell us a little bit about maybe why we're at five and a half percent instead of closer to three? And I, and I don't want to take the conversation backwards, but it's important, no, no, that's for, important. Yeah, no, that's for important people piece. to understand, I think. You're on mute, Tom. The difference is we're anticipating only a $10 million increase in valuation. Whereas normal, it's between 40 and 50 million. And that growth in that total valuation is what helps uh, keep that tax rate lower. And there's a number of factors as to why that's the case this year. And I'm pleased to go through those at some point. Again, this probably isn't the time for it, but that's the reason for it, April. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so April, I just said, I mean, in an ideal world, if we'd had our normal evaluation and we didn't have what we're facing now, but ideally, I mean, you guys, you know, both both sides, first time we've agreed on goals, we delivered those goals. In an ideal world, that probably would have equated to that 3% or very, very close. But there's just, you know, the, as Tom has said, the reval last year, there were some abatements that were done that took about $40 million worth of valuation off last year's assessment, which is a little over 1%. So that, that, that is a factor that so if we were at three, the one percent gets us closer to four. Um, and then and then the issues become the realities of just our constituents. This isn't business as usual. This is a really unusual time. And you know, there are people that are suffering in our community with loss of incomes and uncertainties and other things. So I think this is our chance to say, and, and I think going back to the top of the conversation with Tom. Our goal, we should try to get, if it is going to go to referendum, what can we do so it gets passed the first time through in July? Because if we go to a second or third ballot, it's going to create some, some financial issues for the town. And so I, I, so I think that's, that's where we are. We're just trying to see if there's jointly a way that we can get, and, and Sarah, I think to answer your questions, if we can if we get a better sense of where we should end up, we can answer those questions about how does that, how does the town and the school work toward that goal? And we can answer the questions about what does that mean for it? But it's just, in my humble opinion, and, and I think the next conversation with the town council, I, I think people are concerned that the 5.5% combined budgets um, are gonna be a tough sell. I don't know, John, I think you had your hand up. Yeah. I did, but I've been watching Betsy with hers up. So I, I, oh, okay. Betsy, sorry, go ahead. Uh, you're very kind, thank you, John. Um, yeah, so, I mean, to Sarah's point and, um, and April's, um, I have a, a couple of questions. Um, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I kind of feel like what you're, you're saying in a way is the mill rate ultimately is kind of our job your job is to know your budget and what to spend on your budget. And, um, you know, Peter, if, if both sides came in at a 0% budget, I think it sounds like we're saying that that would meet because it's almost a break even a 0% mill rate. Is that what you're saying basically? I mean, 150 is just for drop in the bucket. So I just wanna clarify yeah. that. And then I have a question for Kate. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's, yeah, it, it's $200,000, $150,000 more than last year's budget, but it's, it's, it's virtually a flat budget. Yeah. So we'd, we'd be asking the BOE to give us a flat budget and what that would look like. So I had a question for Kate, which was, um, so I'm, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to attend um, all the workshops and I've been trying to catch up on the videos, but I know um, one I was in, you described the way that you build the budget um, kind of in a layered way in terms of, you know, if we get this, it will cost this. If we get this, it will cost that. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but could you briefly describe, like, do you have a baseline that you start with? Is it zero and then you add to it? Or I'm just trying to understand how, if, if we said today, uh, school board, um, administration on the town side, come back with a 0% budget so we can see what that pain looks like because it's one thing to say a number, it's a whole other thing to see what all gets cut. 
how much work would that be and 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 how difficult would that be? So I guess my question is, is first to you, Kate, or Peter, you're the facilitator. If you'd like to direct that a different direction, I got my question out. Thank you. <laughs> Kate, do you wanna? So um, if, if I'm understanding your, your question, Betsy, we do talk about what we call level services budget, which is essentially our, our starting point. We do go line by line with each administrator in each department and talk about what's in their budget and you know what needs to change for the coming year, what they can shift, what they can reallocate and what they need to keep going in the same direction. Uh, the difficulty with that is that the level services budget is really 80% um, people and all but about, I would say 30 people in the school department are part of a collective bargaining agreement, which means that we have contracts in place or we have contracts under negotiation. So for the personnel piece, um, we're simply plugging in who's here working, what they're doing, what step they're on, what level they're at in their particular bargaining agreement and assuming that they're going to stay on for next year in that job. Um, so to cut way ahead on your, um, I think the point that you're making is that Yes, we could go back and look at level services, but even that, that's where the bulk of our increase in our budget comes from. It's not, it's not added things, it's those, it's those personnel costs. Okay, so to get to 0% increase on the budget, you would have to go back and look at level services. Is that accurate or not? Yes. Okay, thank you. Alicia, your hand's been up for a while. Thank you, I just, um for the school side to hear um, for us to go to zero is is frightening because I mean when Kate talks about that level services I mean actually that will be an increase and so there's an increase in need for student need and, and student growth and um, then there are the contracts that have been um, negotiated and so to come at a zero percent, we're going to be we're going to be going backwards, and um, you know I'm just really worried about getting back into that place after we've started to dig ourselves out of those cuts, and um, that's taken a long time, and at at the expense of other investments, including some of the um, safety and security issues that we need to invest in for our schools combined with the fact that the school doesn't have revenue to um, play with where the town does. And so it's really devastating. And I know it is for the entire town, but it's really devastating for the schools. And it's, it's that, that um, analysis is really scary to me about, about the potential devastation that we would have. I, I don't know what's better, but a, a thought of an incremental reduction is, to me, is a lot less scary because then we can sort of see where we would be versus the zero percent. Yeah, and, and I, I think there may be a suggestion, but John, I think I think I saw your hand. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I put it up. I didn't hold it up though. But uh, oh, okay. No, I, I I guess I'll just comment. I uh, to your original question, I think you know five and a half to six percent increase on the mill rate is uh, in my my view anyway, it's too high. Um, it, it's not something that I could support. I think, um, I think we have a lot of work to do to bring that way down. Now, whether it's a zero um, target or not, I can't say that right now. I, I think uh, kind of the ball's in our court to go through and do our job um, and look through the, the gross budget and the revenue estimates and, and see if there's things that we can make adjustments to and hopefully with advice from staff as well. Uh, to get close to zero, um, whether it's zero or one or two percent, I don't know, but that's kind of where I, I, I see it coming in right now. Um, so I, I, I guess that's where I'm at. I'm anxious to get started, but I'm hesitant to throw out an arbitrary target until I understand um, more of the details about what's behind the numbers. Yeah, can I try something on for size? I mean, one of the suggestions was, Alicia, I mean, great points. And I, and I think, you know, similar on the municipal side, it's, you know, I think, and I think last year when we got to this point, it's, it's a real issue. I mean, at this point, salaries make up such a huge piece of our numbers that that's, you know, that's, that's a consideration for, for all of us. And one, 
one suggestion, the way that we have approached the municipal budget in prior years is whatever the target is. It, it, Tom, usually what he'll do is he'll, he'll meet the target, but then he'll bring forth suggestions saying, please understand that with this target, these are either things the town can no longer do, so it's gonna reduce services, or this is what he thinks he needs, whether it's a public safety issue, whatever. One of the suggestions is, is, is it possible for all of us to collectively say, if, if we start at that, that zero base, which I know I, I hear your concerns, and then kind of look at what's a better, you know, a, a better, you know, a best, better, or good, better, best sort of budget, and we get to look and make decisions as a community about what are the things that we need to invest in as a community that will get us somewhere north of, of zero. But I think, you know, based on where we are, given the community, given the people, and frankly, there's two concerns about next fall. One is setting the tax rate. And the second concern is gonna be once, once we set the tax rate, are we gonna be able to collect all the taxes? Are we gonna have people that are able to pay their existing real estate tax bill? Um, given that if they, I mean, I know a family recently that's lost four incomes in the family. I mean, that's real. So I think this is not like any other time we have ever faced as a community, as a state, as a country. We are in, you know, this is not business as usual. This is a different time we have to find a way we can navigate in our community that, that we take the finite resources we have and how do we best use them? And, and I think it's, we either can kind of come to the plate and, and part of this conversation is how do we do that? We can kind of go into our corners and, and do it or is there a role for the joint finance committees to try to find a way that we can answer this, this rubric about how do we go from where we are? And I think John so eloquently stated it and I think um, we'll probably hear more in our workshop that follows this, but I think the initial sort of feeling of the town council is, you know, a 5.5% overall tax rate at this point would be really hard for any of us to support. Um, we need to be somewhere south of this. And I think John is so eloquently said, instead of trying to take the number and find things to take out, you folks know the budget best. How do we how do we start from a base and add back to that budget the things that we collectively think the community needs the most? We've got to get from where we are to someplace different. And I'm looking for this group to say, how do we do that collectively? What's the best way to work together? Sarah, is that just a minute? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, did I interrupt somebody? Tom, were you saying something? No, I don't think so. No, okay. Um, I, I, I hear what you're saying, John and Peter, about the 5.5. I think we need to be careful the way we frame that, though, because that was never the goal. The goal was always 3%, and that was at second reading. Um, and th that was never the goal for first reading. And I don't think that anybody on this call or anyone listening would would argue that in these times 5.5 is appropriate. Um, so maybe just like an alternative suggestion is what if we like as a next step, just go to what our goal was, what does 3% look like? And then maybe we can go from there uh, because, you know, that's an, that's a, that was already something that we probably were going to do as a next step. And we can just put that into to overdrive and do that sooner than maybe than we were going to do it. Um, but uh, Kate, I'm going to ask you to articulate this probably better than I can. Um, zero percent for us is actually taking things away. Like they're like even for us to get from FY20 to FY21 and level services is an increase in two million dollars. That's just to do the, the 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 majority of the personnel that Kate was saying. Right. So a zero percent budget increase for the school. Uh, for us to start talking about that and putting it out there publicly as even a, an option uh, could be pretty detrimental to uh, some of the, like emotionally to the people in town because that's obvious of what that means. And yeah, Kate, I don't know if you maybe want to elaborate. I just want to make sure that people understand that like a 0% for the school is, uh, is, is really a difficult conversation to have. 
Right, and I, I, um, I hear what Sarah's saying, and I, and I get that people think it would be a, a cool exercise and probably very informative to do um, some modeling of what that would look like. But Sarah's absolutely right about you know two million dollars of that increase in our in our budget is is level services, and so if you start saying things like we're going to go to zero on level services. Then you're starting to talk about human beings and their jobs, and um, that that number just flat out represents about 25 teachers, and so um, it could get pretty um, emotional pretty quickly if we were to start there. Um, and you know, I'm certainly not going to say what we should or shouldn't do, but I, I do uh, agree with Sarah's worry about how that presents to our staff. Yeah. Can I follow up with Kate? Kate, how are you standing year to date? Are, are there any increases to fund balances that we can expect through the remainder of this fiscal year due to the closures? I think we'll be able to recoup a little bit more than what I expected, uh, but we've already got $300,000 used as uh, fund balance revenue in FY21, and we only have 200000 less than 200000 in the bank right now. So I was, I was counting on making up two to $300,000 this year. Um, I'm guessing it'll be more than that, but I don't think it will be drastically more because remember, we're still paying everybody. Um, we're all of our regular staff is still um, receiving pay and benefits. And so the savings that we'll recoup would be in areas like um, supplies that most of which are already purchased for the year for school. Um, and utilities and transportation. And there'll be places where we'll save that'll be unexpected, but I don't expect it to be a huge order of magnitude more than what we're used to. Have we looked at, I know on the town side, Tom, you could probably speak to this. We furloughed non-essential employees yeah. with the understanding that there's um, increased unemployment benefits, uh, I, I think available to them. Is that something that's been looked at on the school side? We can't do that. This, uh, the governor has ordered us to pay all employees. And that's not to say um, subs or spares or folks like that, but any regular employee that's on the school payroll must continue to be paid under the law right now. Yeah, and just to speak for the town side, you know, we've taken, and I can put a chronology together, but it's over two weeks ago, we put a hiring freeze on for any vacant positions. Um, there's a couple of exceptions, uh, but in, in large part, it's, it's a freeze across the board. Um, and we have furloughed all permanent part-time employees. We are currently evaluating what the next wave looks like. If this, um, you know, this outlook was to take us through April, uh, but if this continues beyond that, this is not sustainable. And so we need to do the next level of, of, uh, of steps. And uh, I'm confident we'll have a plan in place uh, if and when that requirement comes. The strategy there obviously is to uh, save as much money we can this year to put it forward to next if, if that's what it requires. And that's not going to be the answer, but that'll be part of this part of the answer, I think. Tom, I should know this, but do you have fund balance used already as revenue in your FY21 budget? No, thankfully we're all I think this is our 10th year where we do not use fund balance at all for budget purposes. Right. As I said, back in 08, we used a huge chunk to uh, keep the tax rate flat and we're still clawing our way out of that hole. And, and, and plus there's a consideration as, as, you know, longer term as we look out for borrowings, if we are gonna do a new school, if you dip into fund balances, we've been told by our, you know, underwriters and bond writers that that can impact the future rates that you get on the bonds. So we've really tried to build our reserves back up and not dip into them, so. True, just a final point, I see Betsy's hand up. True, Peter, and I could not agree more, but by the same token, fund balance, this is exactly what it's for, yeah. frankly. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it is for the sort of catastrophe that you would never see coming, uh, and true. here we are in the middle of it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Betsy? Um, so the, the governor has extended to May 15th, I think I just saw that headline. Um, but uh, I want to, uh, you know, I. I mean, I definitely hear 
and understand about the level of services. And I, I definitely appreciate those descriptions. I guess the only thing I'm wondering, um, there seems to be uh, a viewpoint that if we even looked at that number, that that would cause a lot of problems. I'm wondering if that would be an instructive view for the public to see what it would mean to go to that level in order to build support back up. I'm not, I'm really not weighing in on that one way or the other, but I think there's an alternative view that you could say, if we do go there and people see, you know, I think Kate mentioned, and I certainly wouldn't hold you to this, Kate, but off the top of her head, 25 teachers, you know, things like that. What, what does that look like? What does it mean? I mean, and, and we're, we're talking about the school, but there's pain on the town side too. If we were to go to that, Tom has been through the budget with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> Um, at this point, um, maybe, you know, certainly the council hasn't, so I'm not saying there's not a lot more questions that we have on it. Um, I mean, it's round one for us as well, but, you know, a 0% budget on the town side is also going to mean, you know, uh, pain. Uh, but I'm just yes. wondering if that's something that we owe at least our, our residents. Um, you know, I, I, uh, again, we don't want to go to past ground. And I know the reval was really mixed. Some people got a reduction um, in their taxes, but you know, 60% of, of Scarborough got you know an increase in their taxes of 10% or more. And some people got an increase of 20, 30, 40. I talked to an older lady the other day that got a 54% tax increase last year. So this was already going to be a real pain point. Um, so, you know, I think. Do we, do we think we've got reasonable folks? I mean, I, that's the wrong terminology, but I guess it, it just kind of depends on what do we feel we need for public input and how much input we, we want and need um, to look at, I think what Peter said, you know, good, better, best, I would might say bad, not as bad and really not as bad or, or some other terminology much better than that. Um, so that, that's kind of where I'm at. I guess I'm not quite convinced yet that looking at level services is a really bad idea. Um, that, that's just where I'm at. I think I saw April. April. I, I'm sorry, wait, really quick. Oh. I used the wrong term, level services. I'm at zero based. So sorry, thank you. April? Kate, you can, Kate, you can go if it is a more natural conversation. What's that? Uh, no, I was, I was only going to say that I'm sorry, talking over you guys. Uh, I was only going to say that that I, I certainly didn't mean to indicate that we wouldn't be looking at our level services budget. We're going to be doing that anyway. Um, you know, we, we're not saying that anything is is off off limits. I think what we're trying to say is that the order of magnitude of a reduction to get us to zero um, would be pretty drastic, and uh, that we would want to be very careful about how we describe that. To the folks that work with us right now. Yeah, hugely helpful. Thank you. Uh, so I had two things I, I wanted to say. One was just quickly to circle back. You know, we're, we're paying our employees because they're working. <laughs> so just for anybody who's listening and for this group's consideration, you know, part of the governor's order is that we pay our employees, but our employees are, are working. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to say was, um, you know, we as a group also another thing that I think we really need to, to weigh and to consider is how we're viewing this year's budget in terms of whether we are viewing this um, as a reduction or whether we're viewing this as a relief package to the taxpayers this year. Because what we know historically is that when we make a significant reduction and whether that means staff on the school side or programs, we then spend the next 10 years um, trying to, you know, claw our way back to where we were today. And so what I'm really concerned about is that the drastic measures that we're going to need to take to get down to a 0% or, you know, a slightly above 0% mill rate, those are going to take the school department a really long time to recover from that. And so our people in this group and, and, and the town thinking of this as, you know, a one-time fix and we can tighten the belts and reduce staff and do the things we need to do this year. But then people are going to be 
more open to a conversation next year where we're going to reinstate all of these positions or, or refund these programs because it, I need to know something like that to inform my decision on what I'm, where my priorities are for taking things out of the budget. I mean, I can, I, I can speak. I think this is absolutely more of a ladder. This is, you know, I mean, there are extraordinary measures that are taking place all over, both from national governments and state governments and other. This is a relief recognition that we have people that in our community that are down and out and hurting. And, and what can we do? This isn't business as usual. This has to be how can we provide the services that we need to provide and at the same time be really sensitive to where they are? I mean, hopefully, if you believe the projections, you know, you know, there's a year from now, we should be back to a robust economy. And frankly, we're not going to have some of the evaluation issues and other things. So uh, I'll welcome, we're going to have this conversation in the following meeting. Um, but, you know, Betsy and John, from, from a Lisa Town Council perspective, I think this is a, you know, this is an unusual event that we need to be sensitive as, a, as some type of relief package to where folks are. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, um, I kind of said this, I think, at the last meeting, but I, I'm very aware and conscious of trying to minimize the impact on staff um, th that we have. That's kind of my number one goal is to try to protect that. Uh, and I do think it'll be a short term. So there's a lot of things contributing to why we're in this situation this year. The biggest one being the pandemic, but there, there are other things that were going to make it a challenging year for us anyways. Um, so I, I guess uh, I'm back to, I don't have a number, April. I don't, uh, I, from a personal standpoint, I'm not targeting layoffs to get to where we need to be. That's why I'm probably more in the one to 2% range. Um, but what I, I guess what would be helpful for me is, is from a school board's perspective, would you uh, prefer to get guidance from the council about a number that we feel would help us get to where we need to be from a taxpayer perspective? Or would you prefer to go through your process with the budget and see what opportunities there might be there and come back to us? I guess that would be helpful for, for me and for some, I, I think, future conversations that we'll have. Great question. And if we're answering April's question, um, you know, to me, it's an anomaly year. I mean, and we would hope to, we'd hope to recover out of this. And I know, you know, we're not talking about revenues um, and unfortunately neither is the state. Um, and, you know, to the best of my knowledge and maybe Tom could say otherwise, I don't even know if there's been any economic councils pulled together. Um, I do think I understand that there will be money for schools. I don't know what it's for or how it works. That's kind of why Peter's idea of the, the three level budget so that we could plug in revenues when and if they come. Um, I think, you know, based on COVID and this, this uh, shutting down, uh, you know, based on my, my research, you know, anything we get is gonna come from the state, um, but the state is not got sales tax right now, now through May 15th. So are we even going to lose further revenue? Uh, I hope not, but, um, I think to me, the idea of the, the three levels of budget would be to uh, be able to watch the situation unfold, uh, understand uh, where the pain points are, and then plug in revenue um, as, as it happens. And then, you know, there's a lot of economic stimulus out there. You know, I guess maybe I'm a little more in the optimistic camp. I'm hoping this isn't going to be as devastating as we think. I think we've taken a wise move on the council side to not start the, the clock uh, for the budget. And, you know, um, no, we've got things to do in the schools. We've got things to do in the town. And uh, this is a reaction to what's, what's, what's happening right now. That's, that's my take on it, April. Alicia, I think your hand was up, sorry. Thank you. I, um, I appreciate John's inquiry and I obviously can't speak for the group. But for myself, I would appreciate the guidance um, because I think that it would be um, less harmful to morale to, to actually have that guidance. And, and my thought is maybe if we could use that as like a first reading plus, you, you give us some guidance, we go back and do some work and then come back and you could see the impact and we could have a conversation then about 
um, you know, if there's anything we can do or if the town's um, uh, second goal comes back and, and impacts that differently, um, I think that that could be, could be beneficial. How do, how do others think about that? People and Sarah, what do you guys think about John's suggestion? Yeah, I would, um, I agree, uh, although I would hope that when you guys would come up with that goal, you would take some of the feedback that we've been giving to you in this session into consideration in terms of what that um, target would be. Um, but also I would defer to Kate and Sandy and Diane as to um, sort of what they think is the best approach. I think um, I think I think honestly it does put the heat on the council. Um, so of course I like that, right? <laughs> Not really. I don't. That's why we get the big bucks, right? Yeah, right. And I think it's a. I think it could be a combination. I mean, I think <laughs> say we're well, often here knowing that it's a very different time than we were mm -hmm. two months ago. I think data drives decisions, and I think if we look at the data of the reductions. That will help inform us on how far we want to go. At that point in time, we'll know how far down we came. I see it sort of like in layers. Um, I'm very mindful of trying to work from our brains and not from our emotions and to lead that in our community so that people can make informed decisions. And I know this is really delicate work. And I know that we don't want to divide one group against the other group. So we're in this all together. And um, just that's my two cents. April, Diane, Kate. Yeah, to, to speak to Sandy's point, you know, doing it in layers, I think, um, you know, that's certainly a reasonable expectation and a logical way for me to think about doing this. That being said, the budget proposal, the investment proposal that Kate presented, this is available, you know, on our website and and everywhere. Um, but it, it it really is broken down into layers. It tells us exactly what we're going to need for our staff, for our con for our contractual agreements as of the first day of school. It tells us what we need in terms of if we have students who have required services that we do not have a choice. We have to have the staff to support those students. So we know that number. And then we know beyond that what our individual investments that we had planned to make for this coming year are going to be. And those have been prioritized for us by our building leads and our leadership council. So for me, you know, everything I need to know in terms of, you know, what is in this year's budget and and what we're looking at reducing is all already available and that's a, that's not to say that our um administrators won't have priorities that they would like to let the school board know about but for me you know in terms of guidance from the town council i i i think we do need to know how what the expectation of the town council is in terms of how deep to go you know if if we have a tier one and a tier two and a tier three, you know, some parameters on, on what those tiers look like. And, you know, that's, that's not um, uh, mysterious work, I guess is the word I'm going to use. We, we have, you know, Kate has a handle and has presented all of that to the board already. And so, you know, it, it's more a matter of, of also presenting what the town council would like to see because we're just one department that you guys have to look at. Okay. Diane, I think your hand was up. <clears throat> yeah, I would just add that, you know, I think as we go through this entire process, we need to be really thoughtful about what is that cost benefit analysis. I understand that we're trying to get to a certain target number, but we also have to be really mindful about, um, you know, we can achieve a certain amount of savings, but then we have to be really explicit about, and that's what, and, and this is what it's going to mean. This is how the services that we're able to provide are going to be affected because for us to assume that there aren't gonna be deep effects 
for our students um, when we're speaking about the magnitude that we are. I, I just think we need to be brutally honest about that. Kate, you want to put your hand up, Kate, or no? I'm fine with whatever everybody else thinks. We'll just, we'll make it work. Um, Tom? Just from my, from my perspective, uh, the sooner you tell me what the target is, the better. Uh, yeah, and, and that's just my own personal uh, opinion. I respect everything that's being said and, and I can appreciate why they would say it. Uh, I just tend to rather know my target and uh, have as much time as I can to understand what it's gonna take to get there. It's probably worth noting to this group, and I don't want to get ahead of the council's discussion, but in view of the fact that the uh, primary election date is in fact been moved to July 15, 14th, um, I'll be strongly recommending to the council that we take advantage of that time. And the extra two or three weeks may not tell us anything, but it may tell us a lot. So why not uh, preserve that? And so what that would mean in effect would be to table or postpone the first reading scheduled for tomorrow night till a date in the future. Um, I threw it out May 6th, but that's, those are, you know, points of discussion that the council is going to have. So we'll be buying some time, um, and, and not start the budget process, uh, on schedule. So sort of one last question for this group as, as we're kind of coming up on the hour. So if, if, the, sort of the basis of the conversation sounded like some guidance from the town council would be helpful. April, like the way you kind of summarized tier one, two, and three, or something along those lines. And so now the question becomes, how do you, if the town council kind of sets those guidelines, do you want to work through it as a joint finance? Do you want to work through it? You kind of go back and bring it forth. Any, any ideas about what's the, the, the best process to try to fill in those numbers for whatever that guidance is? I think, I mean, I'll just speak for myself and Alicia and uh, April, you guys can chime in if you disagree, but I guess I would just go back to what April said and that, you know, we can share this with you, this documentation, um, and hopefully, I mean, this is what's in the, this document, the investment proposal, um, which we can probably send to you right away so you guys can have it to reference during your workshop after this, um, is what we would sort of vouch for. Um, and that information is already in there. So I think as long as you guys are utilizing that to sort of help come up with some of your numbers, um, I don't know if we need to belabor it at this point. But yes, I think generally we would like it to be a collaborative process um, I don't know, it, it sounded like the intention for the workshop after this was for you guys to actually come up with that goal, or maybe that was for the, the meeting tomorrow night. Did I understand that correctly? Well, I mean, I think actually, I mean, both of these are workshops. So after this is a okay. workshop, which is more a consensus, consensus driven conversation, and then we'll have to figure out what we take with that. I, I don't think we're gonna take a vote tonight on what exactly it is. It's really trying to develop a consensus and then figure out what we do with that. Is, is the intention though to have to set a goal tomorrow night? Possibly, I think that'll be part of the conversation tonight anyway about what, I mean, we're gonna have the same conversation about what is the process going forward. Tom's already talked about maybe a different schedule and timeline. And so we'll have that conversation, but um, so yeah, I mean, I so I don't think we'll take a final action this afternoon, but it, it's possible I have to talk to the chair. I know the chair is listening on whether when he wants to factor that into a town council meeting. Yeah, Kate. So um, on on that process piece and the idea of extending out the process, um, we have this board meeting on Thursday night where we're supposed to be having a public hearing on the budget. Mm -hmm. the school budget as proposed um, and passed in first reading. So uh, we're wondering now whether we should be extending that or deferring that if we're kind of, it, it feels like we're kind of going back to um, almost to first reading again, because you the, the council won't be passing the budget in first reading is what I'm hearing uh, for some time yet. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, I, we're not going to, I think Tom's proposal that will be discussed this afternoon is whether, you know, we will not do first reading tomorrow night and postpone it to a, a date certain some other time, I think is, is part of the conversation. Do you think it behooves us to postpone the, the public hearing for the school budget if we sense that it's going to look quite different um, in the next couple of weeks? I mean, for what, me, I, I would say yes. even, yeah, I would say yes. That's my personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. I mean, you'll know that you guys are welcome to listen to the conversation this afternoon for the workshop. And then you'll probably get a pretty good sense of where the town, if, if you ask for guidance, you'll probably get a good sense of where that consensus is, which will probably inform whether you should go ahead with a, with a public hearing on, on the numbers that you have or whether it's better to, to, rework the numbers and use those numbers. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but. Alicia. Thank you. Like um, Tom, I, I think that I just want to advocate that I think it will be um, beneficial to know the target as soon as you're able to yeah. provide that. And yeah. I'm just wondering what the mechanism will be to, to share that decisively, because I know at times we've had sort of you know, the workshops and the fight and the finance committees and, okay. and sometimes that's, and then the actual council meetings. So, and sometimes those have um, been different goals. And so what's the process that you're going to use to come up with the final directive? I, you know, I, I think hopefully that will be the outcome of this afternoon's workshop. I mean, that's really, a, you know, a conversation for the chair to decide how he wants to bring that forward. But I would suspect there'll be some action by the council that will be definitive. And as you said, sooner than later. Um, so I don't know, I know Paul's listening to the conversation, so I'm, I'm sure it will be addressed at some point this afternoon. You want me to jump in real quick? Peter, do you want me to jump in with it Whoa. real quick? Sure, yeah. I, just pop I, out I, and actually, Peter, I'm gonna ask for your help, but I, I'm pretty sure we don't usually um, actually codify this or vote on it. I think our budget goals are usually set in the workshop format in previous years. Um, so I would assume that the objective today would be to walk out of there with a good consensus on what the budget goals are. I feel like those should be enough to to give everybody the framework to work within, unless, unless as a body we can't come to those. But uh, Peter, I think in the past, right, we've essentially done workshop formats to set these goals. We haven't necessarily voted on them, is that correct? You know, I, I, well, I mean, I think it's, you know, the answer is always gray. I think in the past, the finance committees have worked on them. We've made recommendations. They go and they're endorsed, if you will. I'm not sure it's an official vote. What is it, a non-action item, Tom, sometimes we do at the town council level? No, I think that they're usually wrapped up into your overall council goals. Uh, there's yeah. often a different process to establish the budget goal, but it's usually formally adopted by council. Uh, there's no requirement to do so, but we do it just to, to make sure it's codified and, and clear for everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I would guess, Paul, based on this conversation, what I'm hearing is it would be really helpful for the Board of Education as they think about what they need to do and some of the, the relationship issues and other things. They would like the town council to become definitive. Um, that would make their jobs easier, it sounds like. So I, I you know, so I guess it's, it's what the other town council members feel comfortable with. Okay, yeah, so we can decide that in the next hour. Yeah, no. Peter, if I, if I just can, uh, so I guess I'm thinking about it slightly differently. I, I agree with Paul in that I don't necessarily see us codifying a new target, although we're probably gonna reach a consensus that our original goal of less than yes. 3% is, is not appropriate anymore. And then we go through the process, right? So we have our first read, which there's an opportunity to amend there. And then we have a public hearing and eventually we're gonna to get to a second read where that's where we're gonna make some of the final adjustments. And I think uh, I, I caution against anything too direct early on because it's gonna be a moving target as we get closer to the middle of June when some of the revenue numbers become more clear, some of the expenses become more clear. So uh, I guess I just wanted to share that. So Alicia, great question. Well, we'll at least have an answer for you at the end of it, whether what the town council action will or will not be. So if that, I know that's not helpful in this moment, but hopefully after the next hour, it'll be clearer. Thank you. Um, Can I just ask, do you guys feel that like you have all the information you need from us though, in order to, to make an informed decision from like 
the school board's perspective in terms of how the process should should run? I do. Um, yeah, okay. I, think, I mean, it's not a perfect world and we've had an hour, but I mean, I, I think we've heard your concerns and those will be factored into the conversation this afternoon. Then I think, I okay. think awesome. it's a huddle after that and how do we move forward? Perfect. Paul, do you have, do you have any, uh, Diane, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add one other piece of information yeah. in, in regards to um, potential cuts. If we are talking about staff cuts on the school side, we do have a legal obligation to notify by May 1st. And so that is a really looming timeline for us if we were to have to consider a reduction in force. Thank you. Okay. Peter, there's one public comment. Would you like me to have it? Next yeah, I was, gonna, I was just gonna yep. turn to you, Paul. Sure, uh, Mr. Gates, if you're still there, I'm gonna allow, allow you to talk. You just have to unmute your mic as soon as I allow you to talk. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, member of the community, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. It's Marvin Gates, 423 Black Point Road. I listened to the last couple of town council meetings. Very much appreci appreciate and respect everything that all of you are doing very clear. Uh, I, my two cents is all I have to offer, and it is, and I'm sure you're hearing from constituents different numbers, uh, I think that with the future uncertain and with the present, let's just say for our fixed income people, has been reduced by a third their income on their mutual funds, et cetera, uh, it would strike me as a fair target that the 3% became 2%, a third reduction. I'm sure lots of people would like more than that, meaning less than that. But uh, my two cents are, if you were to establish 2% or less, sooner rather than later, you would have public support, and obviously the more you can do, the better. So a hard number from the public, this public member is 2%. And that would be a great relief to hear again sooner rather than later. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. So I think with that, um, I think we're a little bit over time, but it was a tough conversation. Thank you everybody for participating. Um, Paul, I'm not quite sure the mechanism to transition to the next, is it just, ought to, we just stay on? Yeah, let's just all stay on and then I, I'll just move the, the others in the room to attendees and um, or they can do what we just did and just turn their mics and their video off. That's fine with me too.